Apple's M1 chip is so far in the iMac, MacBook Air, Mac Mini, MacBook Pro, and iPad Pro. That's a lot of devices. But only two of those devices are marketed as so-called Pro products, the MacBook Pro and the iPad Pro. So I have both of them, and in this video we're going to be comparing them and trying to figure out if you can only buy one, which should you buy? Let's do this. Hey Wear Noticer, Shane here, and welcome to another video on the Wear Notice Technology YouTube channel. If you're new here, definitely take a moment to consider subscribing so you don't miss out on all my other awesome tech videos about things like smartwatches, smartphones, speakers, headphones, computers, tablets, tech accessories, and really just so much more. Anyway folks, in this video we're going to be comparing these two devices, the M1 13-inch MacBook Pro and the M1 12.9-inch iPad Pro. So let's get to doing just that. So first, let's talk about these device's screens. In my opinion, the 12.9 inch iPad Pros is definitely better. I was watching 4K HDR video on both of these devices with True Tone off and at full brightness, and the iPad's picture definitely looked better as it was brighter and the colors were more vibrant. This is because the M1 iPad Pro in its 12.9 inch version has Apple's Liquid Retina XDR display backlit by 10,000 mini LEDs and featuring 2,500 local dimming zones, 1,600 nits of peak brightness, a 1 million to 1 contrast ratio, and an adaptive 120 hertz refresh rate. On paper, the iPad Pro's mini LED display clearly beats the 13 inch MacBook Pro's as it does in real life. The only drawbacks of the iPad Pro screens are that it has a less wide aspect ratio, meaning you're going to see bigger black bars when watching videos on it, and there is also a blooming effect since it's a mini LED display when there's very bright whites against a black background and you're in a dark room. I made a full video about this phenomenon if you want to learn more about it, that'll be linked below, but really I don't think it is that big of a deal since I never noticed it in normal usage before I went looking for it, but it is definitely kind of annoying. And I wish Apple would have went with an OLED display for the iPad Pro so we wouldn't have to deal with the blooming. Plus, the iPad Pro's display is a touchscreen, whereas the MacBook Pro's is definitely not. Not only does this allow you to feel closer to your content by actually touching it on the iPad, but it also enables you to use Apple's Pencil for things like handwriting, drawing, and photo editing. Thus, the M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro definitely wins the display category against the MacBook Pro. Thankfully, both the M1 MacBook Pro and iPad Pro have good sounding speakers. They both have a similar sounding maximum loudness, which isn't hugely loud, but in my opinion, is borderline uncomfortable to listen to with a device right in front of you. I wouldn't listen at this volume. It's hard to decipher a big difference between their sounds though, but I think I might like the iPad's audio slightly better. It does have a four speaker array and you can even feel the bass when holding the device. The MacBook Pro on the other hand has two bigger speaker grills flanking the keyboard. In my own typical usage of these devices though, I use my AirPods Max to listen to audio on them rather than the built in speakers the vast majority of the time, so maybe if I use them more I'd have more of a preference. So I'll call this one a tie because although I might like the iPod's audio better, probably because it does have those four speaker grills instead of two, it's hard to say for sure and it isn't a huge groundbreaking difference. But folks, in the camera category, the iPad Pro blows the MacBook Pro out of the water. The M1 MacBook Pro only has a 720p webcam, which I guess is acceptable for making video calls, but is still a joke compared to Apple's other amazing cameras on their iPhones. On the other hand, the M1 iPad Pro has several cameras, including a 12 megapixel selfie camera capable of recording up to 1080p 60 video, as well as two rear cameras, a 12 megapixel wide angle lens and a 10 megapixel ultra wide angle lens. The iPad's rear camera can also record up to 4K 60 video, which is quite impressive for a tablet. While I rarely use either device's cameras aside from making video calls, it's more than clear even from a brief comparison of the quality of the pictures that they take that the iPad has much better cameras in actual use in addition to obviously on paper. Another important difference between these two devices is their biometric security options. The iPad Pro has Face ID, allowing it to unlock just by recognizing your face, whereas the MacBook Pro has Touch ID, wherein you unlock it by placing your finger on the power button right next to the touch bar. It's hard to pick a winner in this category, since each person may prefer a different way of unlocking their device. I think it would be cool if one of them had both built in, since Face ID is super convenient in that you don't really have to think about it, unless you're accidentally covering the iPad cell camera, and then Touch ID is great for unlocking your device when your face is covered. So whichever security option you like more can win. 
in this category. Moving on, both the iPad Pro and the MacBook Pro are kind of bad when it comes to ports. The iPad Pro has only one, and the MacBook Pro has only two Thunderbolt slash USB-C ports, and the MacBook Pro also has a headphone jack. So the MacBook Pro is the clear winner in this category with more ports, but I wish they both would have more USB-C ports and even other ports as well, like HDMI and an SD card slot on the MacBook, so we don't have to be so reliant on USB-C hubs. Believe it or not, my M1 MacBook Pro right here was actually bricked, as in the device just broke and wouldn't turn on or work anymore all of a sudden when charging through a USB-C hub, so I don't really like USB-C hubs. If you haven't seen my video about that yet as well, definitely check that out and I'll have a link to that in the description too. Now, while both devices are very portable, being a tablet and a laptop, I'm going to say the iPad Pro is more portable as a tablet, since you can really easily use it anywhere, since you can hold it while using it. It's great, for instance, for web browsing on the couch or watching YouTube in bed, whereas the MacBook Pro, for me, feels more like a commitment to get out and use because you need to put it down on a surface. It works best on a desk, although I'm ashamed to say I've definitely used it quite a bit lying down, but I just don't feel as productive at all doing it this way. It's best as a desk device. Also on the topic of portability, the M1 iPad Pro further wins since you actually have the option to buy it with 5G support, enabling you to access the internet wherever you take it without having to use your phone's hotspot or public Wi-Fi. I really think Apple should add 5G support to their laptops too, as I would definitely buy this option if it's available when I'm buying a future MacBook Pro. In my experience, both the M1 MacBook Pro and iPad Pro have good battery life in my own usage of them, but I definitely am more impressed with battery life on the MacBook Pro given the heavy usage I put it through and how long it can still last on a charge, even when doing intensive tasks like video editing. On paper, Apple advertises drastically better battery life on the M1 MacBook Pro with up to 17 hours of web browsing on the device or 19 hours of video playback in the Apple TV app. The M1 iPad Pro only gets up to 10 hours of web browsing or video playback or 9 hours of web browsing over cellular according to Apple both of which are much less than the MacBook Pro, so the MacBook Pro definitely wins this category. The MacBook Pro also definitely wins the software category as its operating system, Mac OS, is so much more capable than the iPad's iPad OS, especially if you need to do anything that isn't basic. For instance, I edit my videos in Apple's professional video editing software, Final Cut Pro. Can I do that on the iPad Pro? Nope, because it's only for Macs. I also like to hook my Mac up to a monitor and take advantage of extra screen space and have a bunch of windows open at the same time. When you connect an iPad Pro to a monitor, it just mirrors the iPad Pro screen. Also, iPadOS doesn't have apps running in Windows, they take up the full screen. It does allow for some multitasking though, like doing a full screen split view where you can have two different apps on the screen open at once, but you can't really have more than two apps open, unless of course you count this pop-up view over already split screen apps. You also don't have a desktop or a menu bar. iPadOS is essentially iOS, the operating system that runs on iPhones, except on a much bigger screen. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing though. The iPad is great for doing things you do on a tablet, and the user interface is definitely much friendlier and cleaner than Mac OS's. However, Mac OS is still more powerful, so the MacBook Pro wins this category. The iPad Pro and the MacBook Pro also both support external wireless keyboards and mice, which is great, but I do need to give the MacBook Pro the win in this category since it is a laptop and thus already comes with a built-in physical keyboard and trackpad. Now, of course, yes, you can type on the iPad right out of the box using its software keyboard, but who wants to do a lot of typing on a software keyboard? I know for a fact, not me. I typed this script on my MacBook, not on my iPad's touchscreen. If you want to get Apple's flagship and most expensive keyboard case with trackpad for the iPad Pro, the Magic Keyboard, that'll set you back a whopping $349 before taxes for the 12.9 inch model. Thus, let's say you're deciding between a 256GB iPad Pro for $1199 and a 256GB MacBook Pro for $1299. Once you add the Magic Keyboard to the iPad Pro for a total of $1548 before taxes, that's $249 more than the MacBook Pro. Thus, when it comes to mouse and keyboard, the MacBook Pro is the clear winner. Now, while we're talking about money, we need to discuss the category of price. The MacBook Pro is a clear winner here as well. That 256GB iPad Pro with Magic Keyboard is only $249 more than the 256GB MacBook Pro if you only get the Magic Keyboard. But won't you want an Apple Pencil too? I did. After all, it helps you get the most out of your iPad. That'll be another $129. 
Want 5G support? That'll be an extra $200. You get the point. A maxed out MacBook Pro with 2TB of storage and 16GB of RAM is $2299, whereas just the iPad Pro, also maxed out with 2TB of storage and also with 5G support in its M1 12.9 inch model, is $2399. With no 5G and no extra Apple accessories, the iPad Pro is only $100 less than the comparable MacBook Pro, with the iPad going for $21.99. But then, what's the point of a maxed out iPad with no accessories, no keyboard to type on, no Apple Pencil, and even no 5G? So, in my opinion, the MacBook Pro is the clear winner in the price category, because it's just a better deal once you factor in all the iPad accessories. So folks, keeping all of this in mind, with the M1 MacBook Pro winning way more of these categories than the M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro, for me, if I had to pick only one of these two M1 devices to have, I would definitely choose the M1 MacBook Pro. While the iPad may have a nicer screen and more portability, the MacBook has it beat where it matters most to me, which is productivity. Not only does the M1 MacBook Pro have more ports and a friendlier price with a built-in keyboard, but it also has Mac OS, which blows iPad OS out of the water. For me, I use my iPad Pro as a luxury, mostly for watching videos and browsing the web, while my MacBook Pro is the actual workhorse I use for school and making videos, editing them once again with Final Cut Pro, which isn't even available on the iPad Pro, which is definitely very unfortunate. For me, the MacBook Pro is the clear choice if I could only have one of these two M1 devices. Anyway, folks, that'll be all for this wear and notice comparison of these two devices. Definitely let me know down in the comments which one you would prefer, the M1 MacBook Pro or the M1 iPad Pro. I do read all the comments, by the way. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to smash that subscribe button and subscribe to the Wear and Notice Technology YouTube channel for more awesome technology videos just like this one. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for subscribing.